it has been over five years since they first added Maned to the gold keys in the tavern and yet still somehow in 2024 he finds his way in some players end game season of conquest lineup and while he's not meta by any means he still can sort of hold his own weight in the end game which is not something that you can say for most gold key commanders especially the ones that have been in the game for five plus years so today I'm going to be bringing you guys my updated guide to Maned in 2024 because I haven't made a guide for him since January of 2021. It's been three and a half years since we've talked about Mehmed here on the channel besides the day that I maxed him. So this video is long overdue. And if you like videos where I bring you updated strategy and guides to some of the older content, make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video. It really helps out the channel a ton. That'll tell me you want to see more guides for early game commanders and it'll push this video out into the algorithm. Also, YouTube tells me that you're not subscribed even though you think you are. Consider doing that while you're down there. Now, you know, I can't start a video without saying what's going on guys cheers oh that's a cool mug you say i agree this is the mega well mug and for the first time in literally years i'm offering merch you might have noticed it right beneath this video and besides the mega well mug we also have the legendary omniarch and classic omniarch mugs and they do come in three sizes of course the mega well mug is my favorite and i want to be very clear you don't have to buy one genuinely i i really don't care all that i care about is that you watch the videos but if you want to watch the videos with a really cool mug you can find them down below okay with all that out of the way how do you get Mehmed? If you're a brand new player, maybe you don't have him yet and you want to know how to get him. And honestly, there's there's really only kind of one way to get him. And that's by getting lucky and opening up your golden chests here in the tavern. You can see that he appears on the reward list here. You can get a full summon of him or you can get some of his sculptures. And then later down the line, he does actually appear in the daily special offer and you'll be able to get sculptures of him every single day if he is a commander that you're looking to invest in or max later down the line. But should you be doing that? That's the question that we're going to answer in this video and in order to do that we have to know what exactly Mehmed is doing on the battlefield that makes him so good in the early game but also even into the late game and that has a lot to do with his skills now Mehmed is a leadership conquering and skill tree commander the skill tree being really the only valuable talent tree that he has and so Mehmed is typically doomed to being a secondary commander I will share with you guys some talent builds in this video if you really want to use a mixed army in the field which I strongly recommend you do not do but I always get people asking for talent builds regardless of my recommendation so I'll show them off later in the video so stay tuned for that but first let's go over his skills okay his active skill when he's not expertise deals direct damage to up to five enemy troops in a fan shaped area and this is a little misleading because the fan shape for Mehmed is very tiny like like look at this ready look at that that's that's not a very big fan shaped AoE okay look at the AoE on the debuff on Richard there that was huge but yeah that's that's a big fan right there that's what I want to see from a med even though this cone honestly it's not as horrible as people say I mean like it's it's fine right it's it's a great no but it's fine anyway he can hit up to five targets for 1150 damage factor which is reduced by 15 percent for each additional target and you deal an extra 700 damage factor to city watchtowers and garrisons now I'm gonna be honest with you guys you're probably not ever going to use Mehmed for a city rally I think there was a time and place for that in the past but these days you don't really see it that often and especially if you're a free-to-play player new player or low spender you're really not going to be a rally leader anyway so let's move on to his second skill very simple it says you get 20 percent attack and 20 percent skill damage this is actually a really good skill to have as your second skill because it provides a lot of open field of damage potential and you can skill lock the commander to the first skill max it and then skill lock him to the second skill and max that and then you can further unlock his four skills and you'll be good to go for the open field we'll talk about that in a minute his third skill says that when you're attacking a city you have a 10 percent chance for a thousand damage factor that's actually quite good but again you're not going to be hitting cities so this is really not going to do anything in the open field for you and then the fourth skill is actually quite good as well it says you get 10 percent unit capacity across the board just more troops in your army that's good and if you're leading a rally you get 10 percent more rally capacity as well again that is irrelevant for us and then finally the expertise bumps up the damage factor on the active skill from 1150 to 1350 so 200 extra damage factor quite nice especially for a gold key commander and then you deal a bunch of extra damage to the watchtower and garrison if you're hitting a city which you won't be but we can't talk about Mehmed without talking about what makes him so good in the end game and that is not only the skills on his kit but his museum relic the double relic upgrade here gives him 30 percent health 
and 10 more skill damage remember he already has 20 skill damage on his second skill so now he has a total of 30 and universal troop health is amazing but not only that his attack is universal as well and so literally as a leadership commander you can put him behind basically anybody in the early mid and late game and just give them a decent aoe nice skill damage bonus and in the end game they're going to get a ton of health which a lot of times like health is the most premium stat in the game still to this day it's typically the stat you're going to have the least of so to be able to just slap 30 percent on any commander is really good i mean we talk about yuge leong being so good in rise of kingdoms and part of the reason for that is because he has 30 percent archer health well great news you can put 30 percent health on anybody as long as you have the meds double relic this relic is a blessing for him and if you plan on using him in the end game this is a must-have non-negotiable and the crazy part is that later on the line he will probably get a third upgrade as well here so we could be looking at like 40 percent health and 15 percent skill damage i mean that would be insane now like i've already talked about in the video i think he should be a secondary commander he should pretty much never be a primary but if you do want to use him as a primary for whatever reason at any point let's talk about a couple of things first of all his equipment he's kind of doomed to the leadership set very expensive extremely end game you shouldn't worry about that that's the glorious goddess set here okay again don't worry about this if you're a new player don't just you can turn your brain off for this part secondly what's the best formation for him well of course it's the wedge formation it'll give him another five percent more skill damage that is again a no-brainer but not something you have to worry about if he's your secondary and then finally I have two open field talent builds for you this talent build is going to be the best if you're going to run a single troop type with him which again if you're going to do that why would you even run him as the primary but this would be the way to go you get extra troops here with fresh recruits you grab buckler shield to take less counterattack damage you grab feral nature you also come up here grab strategic prowess for extra defense after every active skill cast which is quite nice and you actually get some nice march speed with these two talents here and bonus rage with hidden wrath if you're going to run a mixed army in the open field i would run something along these lines still grabbing feral nature but putting three points into arm to the teeth and armor to the teeth which is three percent more all damage and less damage taken which is nice then you have two points left over you grab strategic prowess and the march speed along the way but again you don't need any of these talent builds because you as a smart player watching an omniarch video are going to know that Mehmed is a secondary commander and that's actually going to be one of the best parts about Mehmed and what I want to do now is cover some of the pros and cons of this commander okay first of all he's free you get him from the tavern that's it you're going to get him over time for free yes it will be quite slow but eventually you will be able to max him for free now it took me like four years to maximum if you're free to play it might take five which is insane to think about but the great news is that you only need to have him at five five one one for him to be usable in the open field furthermore we talked about his relic and even at five five one one or five three one one or something like that you still can get the 30 percent health and 10 percent skill damage that is on the relic that just comes with the relic you get that no matter what your skills look like and so you're still going to get all the health and you're still going to get that bonus skill damage which is beautiful one of the best parts about Mehmed. also like i mentioned before he has a five target aoe now yes the cone is not great but there's going to be plenty of instances where open field fights are so chaotic and so hectic that you're at least going to hit three four or sometimes five targets with this aoe it's really not as small as people say most commanders in the game do not hit five targets period which is crazy think about like ermin prime hits only three targets joan of arc only hits three targets cpo prime only hits three targets william the first hits only three targets and his aoe is arguably even worse than Mehmed, to be honest with you Juan, you only hits three targets right like there's so many commanders in the game that only hit three targets and here we are kind of blessed with Mehmed hitting five now yes his damage factor is a little bit low for the end game but still five target aoe is massive value especially for a commander that you can throw behind literally anybody in the game there are some commanders that are definitely better to be primaries for Mehmed than others and we'll talk about that later in the video so stay tuned for that but another pro for Med is that he is end game viable and now he again he's not end game meta I don't want to say that he's end game meta but he is end game viable at least for your transition into season of conquest like you can make decent use out of the med he may only be like a b tier or c tier commander but again he's free and you only need him at five five one one you don't have to wait till he's expertise to use him which is a blessing additionally because he's actually going to be a secondary commander you don't even need to max out his stars or his level you don't even need to bring him to level 60 right I have mine maxed out fully but really you only need to get him to like level 40 to get all four of his stars and if you can get all four stars before then like I've done with my Leonidas or with my Attila I mean really you technically only need him to be level 30 or I mean honestly if you get really 
really lucky, you can get four stars at level 10. If you want to know how to get four stars on a commander that's level 10, let me show you with Gonzalo. First, you're just going to put one star into him. Then you're going to do it again. And the goal is to get this up to 80%. Okay. And the safest way to do that is one star at a time. There's a 10% chance that you'll get more experience than you plan on. So doing them one at a time is the best way to do it. And there we go. He's at 80%. Now you'll see here, we have two other forms of special stars. We have the bundle of stars here. It gives you only 5% luck but 800% experience. And then I think this is called blessed. I don't know the actual name, but this gives you 20% luck and 400 experience. So the combo that I would do here is two of the luck based ones and four of the experience based ones. And then you have a 60% chance of getting a crit here, getting lucky and getting four stars. So let's go ahead and do it. And bop, we got unlucky. We did not get a crit, but don't worry. We're going to get lucky with the Margaret. Ready? Watch this. And boop. There we go. We just unlocked all four of our skills at level 10. It requires a little bit of luck, but you should be able to do it. So it's really cheap to get them to level 10 and you don't need that many stars to unlock all of his skills if you're lucky. And then you could just skill lock the first and second skill and you'll be good to go. Of course, max the first skill first. And the final pro that I want to talk about for Mehmed is that his fourth skill gives him bonus troop capacity, which if it's only at one, it's only 2%. That's not that much, but eventually you will get more points into this skill. And the more troops that you bring to the battlefield, the more damage you're going to deal. The way that skill damage is calculated, normal damage, counterattack damage, all that stuff is based on the number of units in your army. So if you just bring more troops, then you're going to deal more damage. And not all commanders in the game have bonus troop capacity. It's actually quite rare. And so to have this on the Ned is beautiful. Now, when it comes to cons, okay, first of all, yes, he has a nice AOE here, but the skill damage is definitely low for the end game. Pretty good in the early game, to be honest with you, but pretty low in the end game. Also, I guess you could call it a con that he's a leadership commander. I mean, he can't really be primary. He doesn't specialize in like one thing. So you're kind of like wasting that skill tree, right? Like this is such a good talent tree, but it's kind of going to waste. And the final thing, and this is probably one of the biggest downsides of Mehmed is that there's no March speed on his kit whatsoever. Okay. Which means he's going to be extremely slow, especially in the end game. When so many players are running around with multiple calves, or they're running around with the four piece set bonus for infantry. And you have, you know, 30% March speed on Alexander the great, and you have 20% March speed on Liu Che, right? There's so much March speed in the end game. And Mehmed is definitely left behind a little bit, but besides that, there's a lot to love about Mehmed. Now, should you put universal sculptures? into Mehmed, that's going to be up to you. How much patience do you have? I personally recommend that nobody ever put universal sculptures into gold key commanders for two reasons. One, they're basically instantly power crept when you hit season three of KVK and beyond. So those sculptures kind of get wasted. If you want to have fun in the early game, you can do that, but just know that they're not going to be a great investment later. And two, again, you're going to get him for free over time. Now I know it's kind of a meme like, yes, in five years, I'll have a max for free. That's true. But again, once you hit KVK three, you won't care what your Mehmed is at anyway, because you're probably not going to be using him that much. And if you are, he'll be a secondary commander to a March that isn't even your main fighting March. Okay. With that being said, let's talk about some of the best commanders for Mehmed. And as a gold key commander, he is available for KVK one. So let's talk about some KVK one and two pairings here. The first of which is going to be Minamoto. The great thing about Minamoto is that he does have the skill tree as well. He has cavalry, which, you know, has some March speed here, which is going to compensate for the fact that Mehmed is very slow. The med is giving him more skill damage, which is nice. And he's giving Minamoto an AOE, which he doesn't normally have. Plus my med gives him more attack, which he has some here as well. And so in the early game, I think this skill damage pairing is actually quite insane. If you don't have Minamoto in the early game and you're free to play, then what you could do is grab by bars. He also has a five target AOE, which is actually insane for the early game is a nice slowdown, which will help you stay connected to that target with your slow med and you get 20% attack here as well for a combined total of 40% attack. And again, the skill damage bonus on the med is going to be nice for the AOE here on by bars, assuming that he is maxed out. If he's not, it's three target for 750. Keep that in mind. And there's some March speed when you exit combat here, which is quite nice as well. Again, cavalry units going to be a little bit faster on the battlefield for our slow Mehmed. Now, if you don't care about him being slow, you could do Sun Tzu as well. Sun Tzu has great synergy here. He's a bit more tanky than what we've talked about before. But again, he has a five target AOE. He also has a rage engine here. He has the skill tree as well. His fourth skill gives him 20% more skill damage. So in total, you'll have 40% skill damage on this pairing. And and he also gives you 10% health and 10% damage taken reduction. So again, very tanky here, especially if you're bringing more troops to the battlefield, but again, 
very slow pairing of course if you wanted to run a leadership pairing with mixed troops in the early game you could do ethel fled with Mehmed. ethel fled primary because she's a peacekeeper you're probably going to be leveling her up anyway you're probably going to get her to level 60 just naturally while playing the game so you might as well just use her as the primary the support tree is fine here she also has a five target aoe and the skill damage bonus on Mehmed is going to be really nice for her she also has a nice debuff here and because you can actually use mixed units with this army you can get the nice attack bonus from the fourth skill on ethel fled as well here's a quick talent build if you do want to do open field pvp with ethel fled and Mehmed, you come all the way up to the top of the support tree and you grab cage of thorns normally you wouldn't do this with the support tree because you only need two points and rejuvenate but the rest of these trees are just so bad you have nowhere else to put the points plus this is a five target aoe slowdown which is quite nice and you get bonus damage on your ethel fled's expertise to slow targets anyway so there actually is a reason to grab cage of thorns for ethel fled anyway then of course you grab arm to the teeth armor to the teeth and strategic prowess with two points left over you put them into steely soul here and one point into the march speed off on the peacekeeping tree additionally if you wanted to run an archer army in the early game you could do a footmos primary with mehmed secondary they both again have aoe's which is really nice and you get some march speed for your archers here as well now the downside of this is that why would you do that when you can pair the Mo's with YSG? I mean, YSG is just a better version of Mehmed for archers, especially. Plus, he has a rage engine, so there's that. And you could do Pyrus if you wanted to run a more infantry based pairing that is a legendary. I would say the Mo's and Pyrus, like those are mainly investments that whales make. So, like, we're kind of entering into that whale territory anyway, because you're not going to have a good Pyrus or the Mo's for free, just unless you get mega lucky out of gold keys. But yeah, there's some infantry march speed here, which is nice for Mehmed as well so keep that in mind and of course all these pairings could also be used in kvk2 as well if you wanted to you could maybe put Mehmed behind saladin in kvk2 he's a little bit more tanky but he's still kind of fast as a cavalry commander decent pairing here but i think most players aren't getting saladin these days anyway and then finally talking about season of conquest or kvk3 and beyond we have to talk about nevsky okay nevsky is a great primary for Mehmed in the end game because again He's got nice march speed, great stat distribution. He has the skill tree. He has the cav tree. Again, you just slap Mehmed behind him and you get a tanky five target AOE skill damage commander, which is great because Nevsky does not have skill damage. In the same vein as that, you could use Huo primary as well. This is going to give you a quicker rage engine for the first one or two cycles of skill shots here for Mehmed. Again, you're giving Huo a AOE commander and you're also giving Huo 30% health and 20% attack and 30% skill damage on top of the skill damage he already has like health is the one thing who I was missing and so this is going to be a mega tanky army and still packing a really good punch with AoE I actually don't hate this pairing at all think about it 60% total attack 60% total skill damage 35% defense, 30% health, 10% troop capacity. I mean, damn, there's really no buffs or debuffs or anything like that. But for a single army, you can really, you could really do something there for infantry. I see a lot of players use CPO primary with Mehmed secondary. This is going to be a little bit slower than the cavalry options we've shown off before, but he does have 15% March speed. And again, the stat distribution here is incredible. We love to see it. Also, the expertise gives you skill damage on top of the 30% you're going to get from your Mehmed as well. Both of them are AOE. You've got a nice debuff this pairing is actually incredible here's the talent build that i would use for a cpo prime primary also for nevsky and huo here's a talent build i've shown this talent build a billion times but i figured you guys might want it so there you go and i would say those three are like the best choices if you do want to use Mehmed in the season of conquest but if you wanted to use archers i think you could make the argument for herman prime herman prime does have some nice march speed decent stat distribution he also has aoe he gives you aoe skill damage bonus which you can benefit with Mehmed med plus he doesn't have any health so you're giving him 30 percent health more skill damage from Mehmed. i think this is a decent option as well of course again you run into the issue of like why would you do that when you could do ysg but i mean hey a 5511 med is free whereas ysg isn't if you wanted to do a herman prime primary you have two options you could either do this or you could do this depending on if you want the rage engine from razor sharp i think if you're going to run the ysg here you might not need razor sharp but with Mehmed, you, you might want to go with this and finally if we're scraping the bottom of the barrel and we're looking for like maybe just a fifth or a sixth army you could slap together to just get something else on the battlefield you can look at a nebu if you have nebu on the bench this is again five target aoe 30 percent defense nice march speed you have the 15 percent all damage and a rage reduction debuff on the fourth skill nebu is still being used in the field guys and 
I mean, it is what it is. Is he the best? No, but you could still use him if you have him on the bench. And then finally, this goes without saying, but kind of the upgraded version of that would be Asher Bonapal. Downside of Asher Bonapal is that he kind of needs to be expertise for field use, but he's going to deal more damage than Nebu. His March speed is conditional, unfortunately, but again, nice stat distribution there as well. Skill damage bonus, which is amazing. Lot to love about Asher Bonapal. So again, those are more like you're just trying to fill out a fifth, sixth, maybe seventh army. You want to scrape it together with your extra gear. You could do Nebu or Ashurbanipal for sure. So with that being said, I would say Mehmed is still a decent commander that you can use in the end game. And the last thing I want to mention here with Mehmed is that you can use him very effectively in Sunset Canyon, basically at all times, especially with the extra troop capacity on the fourth skill. Here you can see this player MK is in the top 10 of Sunset Canyon for our kingdom. 10 billion kill points, 100 million power player, still rocking the Huo Mehmed. J Min, another really good Sunset Canyon player who isn't VIP 18 and still finds himself performing extremely well here. Also using the Huo Mehmed here, it's very good for Sunset Canyon. So I just want to point that out here at the end of the video, you can use Mehmed here to great success. At the end of the day, Mehmed is one of the best, if not the best gold key commander in Rise of Kingdoms. He's extremely versatile. You can slap him in a bunch of different places, especially because his museum relic is so incredible only he had a little bit of march speed i think that would make him even better anyway guys with that being said if you made it to the end of this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel double check to see if you are you're probably not go ahead and sub click the bell if you want to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on Mehmed. did i miss anything here let me know in the comment section below are you still using him do you still think he's really good and viable or do you think that his time has passed let me know down in the comment section below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on new york i will talk to you guys again soon peace